Hi everyone, welcome back to Caking at Midnight. Tonight we're gonna work on a sugar sale, so let's get started. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's at caking underscore at underscore midnight. And if you like the video this evening, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you already aren't subscribed, hit the thumbs up and hit the bell for notifications. So to get started, you're only gonna need a couple of things. Um, this is a tall thermos cup. It, any cup that will work and make sure you pay attention to the diameter of the bottom because that's the part that's going to be touching the cake. So if you need it to be bigger or smaller, pick a cup according to size. You're also going to need a silicone mat. It doesn't matter what kind, what color, just as long as it is a silicone mat. Um, and for this video, we're gonna use the Isomalt. Um, and this is Celebrex, Celebrex brand, so whichever brand that you wanna use, but it's just Isomalt. You will also need some clips to hold your mat together. So once you have the right cup that you want to use, take your mat and just drape it over the top. And get it where you want it to be. Now you can leave it like this um, or you can use your clips and you can put them to hold your mat the way you want it. So the more indentations you have on your mat, the more you're gonna have on your sail when it comes up. So when you turn it upside down, you're gonna have like this splash effect. So the more that, um, it looks cooler if you have more splashes. This is where your clips come in. Uh, you'll want to clip your mat on sides that you definitely want. So if you want it to be fairly simple, you won't need as many clips. If you wanted to have a bunch of um, drips, then it'll go up and look really cool. So the more the merrier, um, you'll want to have more creases in your mat. And these are the little clips. You can use paper clips or the little clips, anything that will hold your mat in place where you want it to be. So once you have your mat where you want it, make sure that you do. I know it can move around a little bit. Um, we're gonna set it and forget it. So then you need to go to your isomalt. And on the, sorry it's loud. On the back of it, um, just follow the directions on the back and we're gonna take this over the stove and melt it. This one particularly has to be up to 320 degrees, so it's gonna take some time to get there. So I'll be back when we're all melted. So we have melted the isomalt to 320 degrees and it is very runny like water. For the impatient people like myself, you're gonna to have to wait a little bit longer. If you take this where it is right now, where it's really runny and hot, if you can watch, I mean, it's just gonna go right down your, your mat and not gonna do anything. So I know you had to sit here and wait to go to 320 degrees. Once that dries, you can take that off or you can leave it. But you're gonna have to wait till it starts to cool down just a little bit more and then where it gets a little bit thicker and where it's getting to where it almost wants to set and then you can drip it down. Otherwise, you're just gonna have these big long streaks going down and then you're just gonna get frustrated with it. So wait a little bit longer while it cools down. You can keep testing it. Um, make sure you don't burn yourself on the pan. Very hot. Um, so if there's any kids watching this, make sure you have an adult around. So we're gonna wait for this to cool just a little bit longer and then we'll get started. Okay, so when you're waiting for this to cool down, uh, take your spoon and move it around. You're gonna notice that it's starting to get thicker and it's gonna feel like it's harder to move around. Um, so you're getting close. Of what I've done in the past is take a little bit and just start, start building up my bottom a little bit. And you can still test it by putting some over the edge. And as you can see, we're getting a little bit slower on our dribble down. And then just keep kind of building your top or your bottom. And once it's still warm, if you've got something that's gone down and you don't like it, um, you can peel it off. So like if you can, I don't know if I can show you real quick. This one's really soft. So if I didn't like that, I could peel that right up. You'll notice it's starting to get thicker and thicker on the top and harder to move. And then you're getting more to where you can get it to go down the side. If when we're all done and this doesn't turn out the way you want it, you, the stuff that's still in the pot, you can bring that back up to temperature and try this again. Wow. 
when it starts to cool down and it's a little thicker, um, you can have a little bit more control over where you want it to go and you can mold it. So even if you've got a line of sugar um, going down, but it's not quite where you want it, it's going to be soft and you can kind of mold it where you want it to go. that's about where I want it. Now with this isomalt, you're gonna want it to set for about 10 minutes before you move it. So just make sure it's good and set uh, before you try to take it off here. You can kind of test a few areas and as soon as you move this silicone, it's gonna wanna pop right off. So if it doesn't, just let it sit a little longer, but at least 10 minutes. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so everything is cooled down, ready to go. And one side note to know, if you do your isomalt and you use a wooden spoon, please do not do that. Um, the color from the wooden spoon will end up in your isomalt and will turn the color more of like an off white yellowy color. So make sure you're using a stainless steel spoon when you mix up your isomalt. So when you are ready to take this off, you can undo your clips and take them off and you can slowly lift this off of your cup. You can turn it around like this to take it off or you can slowly peel it around or you can slowly peel it off. If you feel more comfortable with it on your cup, you can do that too. Whoop. I'm gonna put it back on there. Um, but just slowly peel this off. And when I set it back down there, I broke it. But this will come off. Okay, so I know that it broke and that sucks, but this also proves a very good point. On this one right here, it wasn't obviously very thick and I was moving it around for you guys to show you how you can get it on and off. If your edge right here was thin, this is gonna happen pretty easily, so I'm glad that it did happen on the video. And to be honest, it could go back on there on your cake. So I also really like the way this came out. Um, to show you a couple things. So it's thin, it broke off. One, if you can see right here, there's a big gap. Um, and over here, it's pretty pretty symmetrical and pretty, pretty cool and thick. So make sure when you're doing your um, edges that everything is thick, it's all symmetrical. So you can turn your cup around when you're doing it. Um, but if that's the look you're going for, then you know that's the look you're going for. Now you will have um, this little hair looking things on just some stringy pieces of isomalt. You can peel those right off. And even you saw how easily this broke. If there you've got one that you don't like, then pull it right off. But when you go to attach this to your cake, just put a big blob of buttercream underneath and then set it on. And now once it's done like this, you can go on the edges and put your edible um, gold leaf on there, or you can mix your luster dust with some Everclear and put it on the top if you want some gold on there. You can make this a color too, but just follow your directions on the package on when to add your color. Um, and I will show you at the end here another one that I did where I've painted or put the edible gold leaf on there. I hope you enjoyed the video on our sugar sale. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below. As always, this is Cake at Midnight and happy caking.